Welcome, welcome, welcome to The Read Report. Appreciate you guys for taking this time to hear me out here on The Read Report. For today, we are going to be talking about the WNBA and the Las Vegas Aces because it appears that they could be in some trouble after a lawsuit was filed by former Aces uh, player uh, Derrick Hemby who alleges that she was discriminated against by the Aces because she was pregnant at the time. The Aces traded her back on January of 2023, so this was right before uh, the WNBA season, right before they were able to, right before last year, before they uh, repeated as champions. And she was traded to the Los Angeles Sparks. She is, she was with the franchise for eight years. So she was there when they were in San Antonio and then uh, when they moved to um, Las Vegas in 2018. And Hamby is a, uh, she did win the WNBA championship with the Aces back in 2022. Uh, like I said, she was, she was traded to the Sparks before the season when they repeated in uh, 2023. She was also a uh, two-time WNBA six woman of the year in 2019 and 2020 three-time WNBA All-Star, 21, 22, and 24, which was this year, of course. And she was Commissioner's Cup champion for the uh, Aces uh, in 2022. So the things that she alleged in this uh, suit is she was forced to vacate um, team, provided housing. Uh, Aces players and staff were told to stop communication with her. Aces attempted to wrongfully obtain her medical records. So these are the things that um, she's alleging in the lawsuit. It says, Hambly has filed a federal lawsuit against the Aces and the WNBA, alleging she faced repeated acts of discrimination and was traded for being pregnant. And what we're going to do is, since I'm familiar with these things, we're going to get into the um, complaint. We're going to read, go through the uh, document that was filed and just report the news give some commentary on it and uh, see, try to see where at fault the aces are, if they're at fault at all, if she has a case, just talk about things like that. So let's uh, go through the district court. United States District Court, District of Nevada is Derek uh, Hamby, an individual plaintiff versus WNBA LLC and Las Vegas Basketball LP, DBA Las Vegas Aces, who are, who are the defendants in the case. Going back, <clears throat> number six, it says, on or about October 19, 2023, plaintiff filed an amended charge of discrimination against the defendant name in this action with the EEOC. On or about May 23rd, 2024, plaintiff received a notice of right to sue from the EEOC. Fewer than 90 days have passed since the date of mailing of the uh, notice to right to sue. This action is timely filed <clears throat> pursuant to 42 USC. Prior to filing this action, plaintiff exhausted and uh, exhausted the administrative remedy on all claims uh, pled hereunder. The parties in the suit. It says plaintiff incorporates all the allegations in the preceding paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Plaintiff is a citizen of the state of Nevada and a resident of Clark County, uh, Clark County, Nevada, and an active professional basketball player in the WNBA. Of course, she uh, currently plays for the um, LA Sparks. Um, at all relevant times, defendant WNBA LOC, here and after defendant WNBA or WNBA, same thing, uh, was a foreign limited liability company authorized conduct business in the state of Nevada. Defendant WNBA operates a professional women's basketball league in the United States. At all relevant times, defendant Las Vegas basketball uh, was a foreign limited partner, was a foreign limited partnership authorized to conduct business in the state of Nevada. Defendant Las Vegas ACES is a franchise operation governed by the rules and regulations of the defendant WNBA thereby making the defendant WNBA and defendant Las Vegas Aces joint employers of Plaintiff Hamby. So WNBA is involved in this <clears throat> as well. It's just like 
any other case I would see where someone is um, suing for suing for personal injury. You know, things I've, I've seen a lot with like trucks, car accidents, a truck or a company truck hits, you know, get into an accident with a regular civilian. So not only does that guy get sued, but they sue the company as well, that guy or gal. So they both get sued, just like this right here, the WNBA and the Las Vegas Aces are both uh, in this lawsuit. So general allegations, so here are the general allegations of the case right here. Plaintiff incorporates all the allegations in the preceding paragraphs as though fully set forth <clears throat> herein. Two-time WNBA Six Women of the Year, three-time WNBA All-Star, WNBA Champion, United States Bronze Medal Winning Olympian, and mother of two children, plaintiff Derricka Hanby is a veteran, uh, veteran, veteran, professional basketball player, and and uh, the country's preeminent, pre -mit, pre preeminent women's professional basketball league, the WNBA. She just did win a bronze medal, adding to her um, list of accomplishments there, and something to also help help her case, help her case on. Uh, being wrongfully being discriminated against because she was pregnant, which we know is a big no no in the workplace here in America. It says Hamby first began playing professional basketball with defended WNBA in 2015 when she was selected sixth overall by the San Antonio Stars in the first round of the WNBA draft after a successful collegiate career at Wake Forest University. In 2018, the San Antonio Stars were purchased by the defendant, Las Vegas Basketball LP, and began operating under the WNBA name, the Las Vegas Aces. Again, before that, they were the uh, San Antonio. Um, they were in San Antonio. What were their names in San Antonio? What were they called again? They were the San Antonio Stars. They were the San Antonio Stars. That's who they were before. <clears throat> Aces about six years ago. Uh, from 2018 to 2022, Plaintiff Hamby played an integral role in the Las Vegas Aces, Aces organization's quest to secure its first WNBA championship. For the help in her case, in 2019, Plaintiff Hamby was awarded the coveted title of WNBA Six Woman of the Year, which means she came off the bench and was making an impact. But let's let's look at her. Um, <clears throat> Let's look at her stats. I want to see some of her stats right here. I want to see some of her stats. And it also says that. Uh, uh, hold on, let's go look at her stats. She's been in the league since 2015. And she's averaged 9 points for a career. 9 points for a career. Averaged 13 in 2020. And yep, she was awarded 6 Women of the Year that season. She averaged 11 the year prior. So yeah, she's had a good career and she's an impact player. She definitely, I would, you know, I didn't watch, but it sounds like she was part of the reason the Aces were able to start this uh, dynasty right here when they kicked it off in 2022. A uh, solid three-point shooter. She's gotten better. Well, she's uh, 47% 40, in 2020. 2020 looks like it was her best year. But you can tell she has a list of accomplishments. We're going to keep going. It says, in 2021, uh, Plaintiff Hamby was selected as one of only 22 players out of a possible <clears throat> 144 in the league to play in the WNBA All-Star Game. In 2022, Plaintiff Hamby was again selected to play in the WNBA All-Star Game. In 2024, this season, Plaintiff Hamby was again selected to play in the WNBA all-Star Game. In 2024, Plaintiff Hamby was also selected to be a member of USA Basketball's 3 vs. 3 Women's National Team for the 2024 Olympic Games in Paris, France, wherein she won a bronze medal. So, again, these are general allegations right here. <clears throat> when she won a bronze medal, we're at 25. The WNBA preseason begins roughly at the end of April each year. The WNBA regular season runs from roughly the second week in May each year through roughly the second week in August each year. 
The WNBA postseason begins roughly in the second week of August each year and runs through roughly the second week of September each year. And that's where we currently are now because the Olympics just ended and those ladies have to pick right back up where they left off. And that just dawned on me that we're about to get the award voting for Rookie of the Year, which has been a hot topic all season long in the WNBA between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, of course the U.S. women's um, team just took home gold medal for the eighth straight time in the Olympics, 61-60-61 game winning streak. So yeah, the WNBA season, as hot as it's ever been. It says, on or about June 28, 2022, in the midst of the WNBA regular season, Plaintiff Hamby signed a two-year contract extension to, play, to continue playing professional basketball with defendant Las Vegas Aces. This contract um, was for the purposes of securing Hamby as a player for the Las Vegas Aces for the 2023 playing season and the 2024 playing season. So this year would have been her last year had they not traded her to LA. Uh, with such a contract set to expire May 15, 2025, in an effort to detour to deter Hamby from entering the free agent market, where she would have been one of the more compelling available players, defendant Las Vegas Aces offered her a two-year contract extension. In connection, and tripping. In connection with this office, the uh, the defendant Las Vegas Aces promised Hamby certain benefits and inducements outside of the contract to entice Hamby to sign. These benefits included, but were not limited to, an agreement by the Las Vegas Aces to cover the private school tuition costs for Hamby's daughter, Amaya, in the form of a donation to Amaya's school. Additionally, defendant Las Vegas Aces agreed, agreed to, uh, to allow Hamby to occupy team-provided housing accommodations, though Hamby also had a separate residence in Nevada. I wonder if housing accommodations only apply to WNBA and the NBA players. I would assume so. I would probably get that as well. I mean, when you are playing in a league like that, you're being traded, things like that can happen, I would imagine. So that's probably a question that everyone but me know. Uh, where were I? Where was I? Where was I? Oh, this would allow Hamby's family to assist with child care for Amaya while Plaintiff Hamby was traveling for road games. Plaintiff Hamby signed the contract extension with the interest and desire to continue her playing career with a Las Vegas organization and solidify her status as a franchise player. And we know that that team is already stacked. You know what I'm saying? They got, uh, was it Sonya Gray? Uh, Kelsey Plum, of course, Asia Wilson, and there was another girl who made it to the Olympics as well, if I'm not mistaken. Is it Jackie Young or something? I think it was Jackie Young. So they got a stacked team already. And, you know, they still have a shot to win it. But I was just trying to check to see where um, Hamby was from. She's from Georgia, Marietta, Georgia. Okay, went to Wake Forest or something like that. Okay, I'm just checking. <clears throat> It says approximately three weeks later, on or about July 18, 2022, Plaintiff Hamby discovered for the first time that she was pregnant with her second child. Congratulations to her, but I know that that was two years ago, but congratulations. On or about August 6, 2022, Plaintiff Hamby informed the head coach of defendant Las Vegas Aces, Becky Hammond, and other coaching and training staff of her pregnancy. On or about August 8, 2022, Hamby's pregnancy was confirmed at her first doctor's visit. Hamby, therefore, uh, <clears throat> thereafter notified the general manager of defending Las Vegas AC, uh, ACES, Natalie Williams, of her pregnancy. On September 18, 2022, the Las Vegas Aces won the first WNBA championship in franchise history with the help of plaintiff Hamby, who was part of starting five in 32 of 34 regular season games in 2022. On September 20th, 2022, it feels like I'm not even reading a lawsuit complaint. It feels like I'm just reading up her accomplishments. Well, I am just reading up her accomplishments right now. We haven't even gotten to it yet, but we're about to get there. You can feel it coming. 
On September 20, 2022, while on stage at the Las Vegas Aces Championship Victory Parade in Las Vegas, Nevada, Plaintiff Hamby publicly announced to fans and media that she was pregnant. After making her pregnancy public, Plaintiff Hamby experienced notable changes in the way she was treated, there we go, by Las Vegas Aces staff. For example, when Amaya's school tuition became due in September 22 and Plaintiff Hamby inquired with General Manager Williams and Las Vegas Aces President Nikki Fargus about it, Williams and Fargus informed Plaintiff Hamby that they were working on it. We're working on it. You know what that means when they say we're working on it. We're working on it. Now you knew this thing was due. You knew. You knew her daughter's too. We're working on it. We'll get back to you. But provided no date by which the donation for Amaya's tuition would be made. On October 1st, 2022, General Manager Williams informed Plaintiff Hamby that she must vacate the team provided housing. Damn. Okay, let me just keep reading, man. Because this sounds petty right here. Because the Bible says to be fruitful and multiply, so her bringing in a child is a good thing. Right? Or am I wrong? That's what the Bible said. That's what, that was a commandment from God to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. <clears throat> in November 2022, Plaintiff Hamby again followed up with Williams and Vargas regarding defendant Las Vegas Aces' promise to cover tuition costs for Hamby's daughter, Maya. Plaintiff Hamby was told they were still figuring it out. We're figuring it out. We're working on it. Now we're figuring it out. They plotting on you, girl. But she was given no date by which the tuition payment would be made. Now, I'm going to get further into this, but on 39, it said that she was told to vacate. She was told she was, no reason was given. Uh, oh, she was told to vacate team provided housing and no reason was given but they didn't pick back on that they didn't pick right back up on that and number 40 or line 40 but maybe we'll get there maybe we'll see all right on or about january 15 2023 during a phone call between head coach hammond and plaintiff hamby hammond asked hamby whether she planned her pregnancy does it matter Damn, does, does it, look, seriously, does it matter? Somebody asked, okay, let me just keep reading. Maybe it's just, when Hamby responded that she did not, Hamby told, Hammond told Hamby that she was not taking proper precautions not to get pregnant. That's a thing in the WNBA? Like there's a, there's something about precautions on getting pregnant on when to get pregnant, hey, do it after the season. Uh, if we're tanking, get pregnant. If we, if you see we're not going to make the playoffs, get pregnant. What, like, what is this? What, what are the precautions? I'm going to keep reading, but this now I'm getting offended. Now I'm getting offended. Also, during that phone call, Hammond questioned Hammy's commitment and dedication to the team because she's bringing a child into the world. You're questioning her commitment and dedication to the team because he is bringing another child into the world. She's a two-time mother now. Those things that they were saying about Becky Hammond, man, when she was trying to be a head coach in NBA. Now I'm starting to believe some of it. Now I'm starting to believe it. Hammond told plaintiff Hamby that she was a question mark. Hammond, uh, Hammond <clears throat> further stated that the Las Vegas Aces needed bodies. They signed somebody else. And that Ham and that Hamby would not be ready to play in time for the start of the season. In response, Hamby assured Hammond that she was committed to the team, would be given birth during the offseason, and anticipated being fully ready to play by the start of the preseason in April 2023. I doubt that Hamby is the only one that has gone through something like this. This this now starting to sound like bullying. 
Also during uh, that phone call, Hammond accused plaintiff Hamby of signing her contract extension knowingly pregnant, a false accusation which Hammy, uh, which Hamby denied. So, so I gotta I gotta now find out <clears throat> if there's some type of precaution that pregnant women in, that women in the WNBA that the WNBA players, all of them are women, have to take in terms of their pregnancy. I'm, I'm sure somebody come across this and say, hey, you idiot, there is something, blah, 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 blah. I didn't know. So it's sounding like there is something. If, if it's an accusation that's being denied, it's sounding like there's some precaution that you have to take. And I still think it's ridiculous, but if you sign a contract or something like that, then that's on you. It says, also during that phone call, Hammond informed Hamby that it was believed by Law, the Las Vegas Aces staff that Hamby would get pregnant again for a third time. Also during that phone call, Hammond accused Hamby of not taking her off-season workout seriously. Another false allegation, though seven months pregnant at the time. She's about to pop, Becky. She's about to pop. What do you want to do? You want to go lift? Deadlift? You want to do sit-ups? You want to do pull-ups? Push-up? What do you want to do? Uh, so I'm speaking time. Hamby was working out regularly as permitted by her medical doctors, including playing basketball and doing regular Pilates and calisthenics. 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 How do you say that? Workouts. Also during that phone call, <clears throat> Hammond told Hamby that Hamby did not hold up her end of the bargain and and that no one expected her to get pregnant again, implying that by signing the contract extension, Hamby implicate uh, implicitly agreed she would not get pregnant during the two-year extension period. It says plaintiff Hamby then stated <clears throat> two times to Hammond, you're trading me because I'm pregnant? Hammond responded to plaintiff Hamby's uh, inquiry by stating, what do you want me to do? Hammond did not deny the accusation that Hamby was being traded because she was pregnant. On or about, 20, on or about January 16, 2023, Hammond called plaintiff Hamby and told her, your time with the Aces is up, and that it is best for Hamby's career if she moves on. Hammond told Hamby that Hamby could pick a place like Los Angeles or Atlanta, or that Hammond uh, could trade her to either the Connecticut Sun or Indiana Fever. Should have traded her to the Fever to team up with, um, uh, what's the girl name? I know Caitlin Clark, but what's the other girl name? What's the other girl name who plays for the Indiana? Boston, Alicia, this is Boston something. She went to South Carolina too. Indiana, Beaver, Boston. Aaliyah Boston. She should have traded her to Indiana to play with Aaliyah Boston and that Caitlin Clark. <clears throat> um, on, 20, on January 21st, 2023, defendant Las Vegas Aces issued a public announcement that plaintiff Derricka Hamby had been traded to the Los Angeles Sparks. Also on January 21st, 2023, uh, Plaintiff Hamby issued the following statement via social media. So yeah, we're going to read this. She says, with that being said, I am heartbroken. Being traded is a part of the business. Being lied to, bullied, manipulated, and discriminated against is not. I have had my character and work ethic attacked. I was promised things to entice me to sign my contract extension that were not followed through on. I was accused of signing my extension knowingly pregnant. This is false. I was told that I was a question mark and that it was said that I was, I, it was said that I said I would get pregnant again. So it sounds like some gossip going around, going, going along, going on the organization because we read that part that it was implied that, oh, we think you're going to get pregnant a third time. And this is like, Sounded like a conversation that was taking place 
And to me, it's just ridiculous. It's crazy. It's sinister to think that this is really a, like it's looked at as a crime to bring children in the world. Like that's crazy. That's crazy. Like what if what if what if what if your parents didn't keep you? What if they didn't keep you? You here? Why can't other why can't new babies be brought into the world? You here? This, this, this is crazy, man. Uh, and there was a concern for my level of commitment to the team. I was told that I didn't hold up my end of the bargain because no one expected me to get pregnant in the next two years. Don't bring new life into the world. We got a deal? Deal. That's crazy. Um, <clears throat> did the team expect me to promise not to get pregnant in exchange for the contract extension? I was asked if I planned my pregnancy when I responded no. I was then told that I was not taking precaution to not get pregnant. I was being traded because I wouldn't be ready and we need bodies. These are the things that Becky Hammond, that she alleged Becky Hammond told her. I plan to play this season and I have expressed my desire to play this season. I have pushed myself throughout my entire pregnancy and have continued to work, to work out, basketball included my own <clears throat> and with my team and with team staff even on days where it was uncomfortable to walk only to be inaccurately told that I was not taking my workout seriously and yeah we just don't see that with my return I remain transparent with everyone within the organization and yet my honesty was met was met with coldness disrespect and disregard for members of the management of management because when you can't do nothing for them they show you exactly who they are they show you exactly who they are when they feel like you more not you're welcome you're no longer valuable and hey, this is what we thought of you all along right here this is what we've always thought right here that's exactly what it's about this is, that's what it sounds like I have only put this organization first since day one before any of them were here. And, and that's right. They were formerly in San Antonio. They were not in Las Vegas. It was a different organization. Becky Hammond was not there. It was a complete different regime change once they moved to Vegas. You're getting moved regardless, and it's best for your career that you move on from the Aces. The unprofessional and unethical way that I have been treated has been traumatizing to be treated this way by an organization, by women. Notice she capitalized that because we always hear them talk about how they're together, their family, you know what I'm saying? Putting on this smiley, smiley face in front of the media, in front of the people. So notice how she capitalized that. That's not by chance. By women who are mothers, she said to be treated this way by an organization by women who are mothers, who have claimed to be in these shoes, who preach family, chemistry, and women's empowerment is disappointing and leaves me stick to my stuff. We fought for provisions that would finally support and protect players, player parents. This cannot now be used against me. That's what she posted on social media back in January 2023. And um, we're still on line 50 and it goes on to say, association, um, association, wait, what is this? Social media. Okay, associate, oh, okay, I see. They went 51 now, I missed this. I don't know about January 23rd, 2023, the executive director of the WNBA Players Association, Terry Jackson, on behalf of Plaintiff Hamby, sent an email to the defendant, WNBA, <clears throat> WNBA's general counsel, Jasmine Dershut, 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 whatever, requesting an investigation by the WNBA into the allegations, allegations made public by Plaintiff Hamby on January 21st, 2023. On or about February 8, 2023, 
via its official X, formerly Twitter account, the defendant, Las Vegas Aces, announced that the defendant, WNBA, launched a formal investigation into the allegations raised by plaintiff Hamby and her January 20th, 21st, 2023 social media post. <clears throat> On March 6, 2023, plaintiff gave birth to her son, Legend. Congratulations. Pro, pro family. On or about April 28, 2023, plaintiff timely reported to training camp for the Los Angeles Sparks and began preseason play. Plaintiff did not miss any required time with the Los Angeles Sparks as a result of her pregnancy. Plaintiff went on to play all and all 40 regular season games for the Los Angeles Sparks, not missing a single game in that season. So she was there. They was too focused on her getting pregnant the third time. She was there. What was the agenda here? On May 16, 2023, the defendant WNBA publicly announced it, con it concluded its investigation of the defendant Las Vegas Aces by issuing the following statement. This is what the WNBA issued back on May 16, 2023. WNBA imposes penalties on the Las Vegas, on Las Vegas Aces <clears throat> after investigation. It says, the WNBA announced today that it has rescinded the Las Vegas Aces 2025 first round draft pick for violating the league, rule, league rules regarding um, imp imp impermissible player benefits and suspended Las, Ve Las Vegas Aces coach Becky Hammond for two games for two games without pay for violating Lee and team's respect in the workplace policies. Due to a prior trade, Las Vegas, Las Vegas does not have a 2024 first round draft pick. The team violation involved promises of impermissible benefits in connection with negotiations for an extension of then ace player Derek Hamby player, uh, player's contract. The respect in the workplace violation was related to comments made by Hammond to Hamby in connection with Hamby's recent pregnancy. So are they saying, am I reading this wrong? Are they saying that um, it says the team violation involved promise, promises of impermissible benefits in connection with negotiations for an extension of then a split or to Hamby player country. So they're saying that those type of negotiations are not allowed like her is this in connection with her asking him to pay for her daughter's tuition as well okay i'll just keep going somebody will correct me the respect and work with say after a complaint by hamby on january 21st 2023 alleging misconduct by the aces the league began an investigation the investigation included interviews with 33 people and a review of individuals raised additional concerns about the conduct of the aces during the most recent free agency period the investigation was not able to uh, substantiate any of those in the, uh, additional concerns it is critical that we uphold the values of integrity and fairness which create a level of and level playing field for our team, said that being the commissioner Kathy L and whatever man. The Aces failed to appear to league rules and regulations and have been disciplined accordingly. We are also disheartened by the violation of our respect in the workplace policies and remain committed to ensuring that enhanced training is conducted and standards are followed across all WNBA teams. While the defendant WNBA rescinded the Los Angeles, uh, the Los Angeles Falls, I was about to say, I was about to say the Los, the Avengers, <laughs> rescinded the Las Vegas Aces 2025 first round draft pick for violating league rules and regular and rules regarding impermissible players' uh, benefits, and suspended Las Vegas uh, Aces head coach Becky Hammond for two games without pay for violating league and team uh, respect and workplace policies the defendant wnba provided no meaningful provided no meaningful redress to plaintiff hamby for the harm she suffered as the victim of the violations found by the wnba 
such as this <clears throat> disapproving her trade to the Los Angeles Sparks, though it uh, though it was empowered to do so. The defendant WNBA took no steps to correct or address a clear-cut violation of plaintiff's uh, Hamby rights under federal and state anti-discrimination law. The defendant WNBA did not interview any Las Vegas Aces Aces players in connection with his 2023 uh, investigation of the defendant Las Vegas Las Vegas Aces and head coach uh, Hamby. Had players been interviewed, they could have corroborated key conversations between plaintiff and defendant Las Vegas Aces and other relevant facts as alleged by plaintiff Envy. So you see now, we're going to get into the part, most likely, where the players were um, instructed not to communicate with Envy. And I, and I do remember, I vaguely remember Ham, uh, Becky's um, suspension. And I, I vague memory, but when I I probably heard about this, but when I saw it was two games, I, I I think I initially laughed as well because I'm like, what the hell is two games? I mean, yeah, they don't play as much as the men in the NBA. They play 82, and the women play about 34, which should be raised up to about 32. I would think so now that you know Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese has uh, come into the league and doing what they doing. You can add more games to the schedule, but I don't want to get into all that right now. I don't get into all that right now. That's, that's for another day. But you are about to get into the fact that, you know, these these players talk to each other. And these women, you know, on the team could have helped cooperate these conversations as the um, as as uh, we're seeing here. They could have helped add to the conversation, but it's sounding like the Aces deliberately did not you know, talk to these players. Purposely didn't speak to the players who clearly most likely had conversations with um, Derek and Hamby. So let's keep reading it and I'll see where we go. It says, number 60, line 60. It says, the defendant WNBA did not impose adequate punishment consequences on the defendant Las Vegas Aces for the disc uh, discriminatory treatment experienced by plaintiff Hamby nor for her unlawful trade to the Los Angeles Sparks such that it would deter any uh, future similar conduct. So you didn't do anything in her mind to prevent you know, this from possibly happening, happening again. You just said, give me your first round pick in 2025. The defendant WNBA also did not impose adequate punishment or consequences on head coach Becky Hammond for her discrimination treatment of plaintiff Hamby. The defendant WNBA offered plaintiff Hamby no remedy, no um, <clears throat> remedy that would inquire to her benefit for the violations it found. Plaintiff Hamby, Hamby's trade to a less competitive team resulted in a loss of reputational prestige and brand value typically associated with being part of a two-time WNBA champion franchise. It also resulted in a loss of marketing and or endorsement opportunities in the Las Vegas sports market that were not available to her and the Los Angeles sports market, far more saturated endorse endorsement market far more saturated in the market. After plaintiff engaged in protected activity by publicly complaining about her discriminatory trade, the defendant Las Vegas Aces engaged in a number of retaliatory acts against the plaintiff, including, but not limited to, issuing a directive <clears throat> to Las Vegas Aces staff Seize communication with plaintiff. Okay, so this is the part we're talking about. Seize communication. This is just kind of like some petty childish ish to do. Don't talk to her. Didn't we leave that behind in high school? Even in college, we left that. But I mean, in high school, we didn't even do this in college. I mean, the new, the new people, the underclassmen probably did. Come on, man. Making false, making a false public statement through his general manager, Natalie Williams, on a radio show that implied plaintiff 
and Las Vegas Aces were aware of plaintiff's pregnancy since June 2022. Attempting to wrongfully obtain a confidential medical records, confidential medical records from plaintiff after informing her she was no longer a member of the Las Vegas Aces. Refusing to extend an invitation to plaintiffs to attend the White House ceremony with Vice President Kamala Harris to commemorate the Las Vegas Aces' first WNBA championship, and giving a directive to video personnel at a September 17, 2023 Las Vegas Aces playoff game prohibiting the showing of plaintiff's daughter Amaya on Arena's video screen, despite the fact that plaintiff's daughter was often previously shown on such video screen and was a fan favorite then immediately cutting away from a shot of plaintiff's daughter when she was uh, inadvertently shown on the arena's video screen. This is some petty stuff right here, boy. This is some real life petty stuff. Like the fact that people actually have the time to be this messy. That's the alarm. People have the time to do stuff like this. <clears throat> At the time, plaintiff engaged in protected activity by complaining about unlawful workplace discrimination. Plaintiff was under a 13 month WNBA league marketing contract to perform certain marketing work for the defendant, WNBA in exchange for compensation outside her player's contract. After engaging in protected activity, the defendant WNBA did not extend plaintiff, plaintiff Hamby's elite marketing contract. All this allegedly because she decided to go have another child. So they clearly, clearly wanted to market her. She brought that baby in the world. She was pregnant with that baby. It sounded like it was a no-go for them. It says, first cause of action, discrimination based on sex, pregnancy, and violation of Title VII. We're almost done here. Plaintiffs incorporates all the allegations in the preceding paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. Plaintiffs is a member of the class of persons protected by state and federal statute prohibiting discrimination based on sex, pregnancy. <clears throat> Defendant is an, is an employer, is subject to Title VII as amended in NRS 613.310 and thus has a legal obligation to provide plaintiffs a fair, non-discriminatory work environment and employment opportunities. The Pregnancy Discrimination Act of 1978 uh, prohibits discrimination in employment because of sex and on the basis of and on the basis sex, which is further defined as as on the basis of pregnancy, childbirth, or related medical conditions. Defendant's decision to trade plaintiff was motivated by plaintiff's announcement that she was pregnant after signing her two-year, after signing her extension, contract extension. Defendant's trade of plaintiff Hamby caused her some harm including loss of promotional and or endorsement opportunities, relocation to a more unfavorable tax environment, California, and the denial of a chance to participate for a back-to-back -back WNBA championship. Plaintiff's trade constituted a change in terms of conditions for her employment for which she suffered harm, including but not limited to additional tax burdens, loss of marketing endorsements and sponsorship opportunities, um, reputational harm from exchange from from excluding her from a championship team and other financial and monetary losses. Plaintiff was embarrassed, humili humiliated, angered, and discouraged by dis the discriminatory actions taken against her. Plaintiff suffered compensable emotional harm, including, but not limited to, mental anguish, loss of enjoyment of life, emotional distress, and anxiety resulting from this unlawful discrimination by her employer. 
plaintiff is entitled to be fully compensated for her emotional um, <clears throat> disturbance by being forced to endure this discrimination. Pursuant to the 1991 amendment uh, to Title VII plaintiff, entitled to recover a punitive damages for a defendant's intentional violations of federal and state civil laws, defendant engaged in such actions with malice and reckless indifference to plaintiff's uh, federally protected rights, and defendant must pay plaintiff an additional amount in punitive damages. <clears throat> Therefore, plaintiff is entitled to recover damages for the sake of example to deter other employers from engaging in such conduct and by way of punishing the defendant in an amount deemed sufficient by the jury. Plaintiff has had to obtain the services of an attorney to protect her rights and secure compensation for the damages incurred as a result of these of these violations of Title VII, and therefore she is entitled to recover reasonable attorney's fees against defendant pursuant to 42 U.S.C. Second cause of action, retaliation under 42 U.S.C. Plaintiff incorporates all the allegations in the preceding paragraphs in the preceding paragraphs as though fully set forth therein. In violation of 42 U.S.C., defendant uh, retaliated against plaintiff after she complained of acts which, which she uh, reasonably believed were discriminatory by way of non-exhaustive uh, non examples, defendant retaliated against plaintiff by issuing a directive to Las Vegas Aces players and staff to seize communication with plaintiff. Making a false public statement through its general manager, um, Natalie Williams, on a radio show that implied plaintiff and the Las Vegas Aces were aware of her um, pregnant status. So I believe we already read all of these. The, yeah, we already read this, so we remember these. These were the uh, these were the uh, complaints. It says these acts were done in an effort to punish plaintiff Hamby and would have dis. <clears throat> Dissuaded, dissuaded a reasonable employee from engaging in protected activity. Plaintiff may be unaware of additional uh, detrimental acts constituting retaliation after her trade. So it sounds like, you know, some, like I said, I've been part of these type of depositions. So I'm looking going to be some psych involved, which can make the depositions longer, go all day. They're going to go all day. And yeah, there'll be some work to be done. Uh, the actions taken by defendant to work to be done to um, prove these uh, complaints, these allegations. The actions taken by defendant were done in response to plaintiff's protective complaint of discrimination were designed to dissuade a reasonable worker from uh, complaining about discrimination or otherwise engaging in protected activity and such conduct by defendant constitutes illegal retaliation prohibited by federal and state statutes. Due to its illegal actions, defendant must pay damages in an amount to be determined at trial uh, for back pay, front pay, loss benefits, and cap uh, compensation to compensatory, compensatory <laughs> damages for emotional pain, suffering, inconvenience, mental anguish, and loss of enjoyment of life. So yeah, we're going to get all those questions when it's changed. For your sense, what you've not been able to do that you were able to do before. I get some tears in his depositions. A defendant engaged in such actions with malice or reckless indifference to plaintiff's federally protected rights, and defendant must pay plaintiff additional amount and punitive damages for the sake of example and by way of punishment and amount that deemed sufficient by the jury. Plaintiff has had to obtain. The services of attorney. I believe we read this. Yeah, we read this as well. Now, here's the third cause of action as we uh, scroll through this. <clears throat> Plaintiff incorporates all the allegations in the preceding paragraphs as though fully set forth therein. Herein. Defendant is an employer subject to Title VII. 
Plaintiff engaged in protective activity, protected activity on January 21st, 2023 by publicly complaining about her discriminatory treatment by defendant Las Vegas Aces. Plaintiff engaged in protected activity again on January 23rd, 2023 by complaining directly to the defendant WNBA and requesting an investigation. In violation of 42 USC, defendant WNBA retaliated against plaintiff for her protected activity on January 21st, 2023 for publicly posting her workplace complaints to social media to social media by failing to properly investigate plaintiff's claims of unlawful workplace discrimination based on her pregnancy. Despite its findings that respect in the workplace violations occurred in connection with plaintiff's treatment by the defendant's Las Vegas Aces and head coach Becky Hammond and her resulting trade, the defendant WNBA, WNBA provided no meaningful redress to plaintiff Hamby for the harm she suffered as the victim of the violations. Found by the WNBA such a disproving, such as disproving her trade to the Los Angeles Sparks, though it was empowered to do so, defendant WNBA failed to properly investigate plaintiff's claims for illegal workplace discrimination and issue appropriate remedies. Defendant WNBA failed to interview key witnesses in connection with its investigation. Defendant WNBA failed to take any steps to deter future wrongful or illegal conduct by the defendant Las Vegas Aces and head coach Becky Hammond. Defendant WNBA imposition of the two of a two-game suspension for head coach Becky Hammond was not adequate to deter similar future conduct or, or to remedy the adverse employee, employment actions experienced by plaintiff. It says defendant failed to impose any proper remedial measures in connection with plaintiff Hamby's complaint of unlawful workplace discrimination or properly investigate such claims as way to punish plaintiff Hamby for her January 21st, 2023 public complaint of pregnancy discrimination at the hands of defendant Las Vegas Aces. Defendant refused to extend plaintiff's lead marketing contract after plaintiff engaged in protected activity by complaining about and opposing unlawful workplace discrimination. To me, it's sounding like a lot of this stuff is going to get settled and we're not going to get a trial because I feel like there's a lot of things that the WNBA don't want exposed. Because when you deal with things such as this matter, you start to expose like certain salary numbers and things like that that they don't want public and just behind the scenes stuff that people don't really think about or don't know have information to pertain to the WNBA like they don't want stuff like that out there so this this is sounding like the more I read this the more it sounds like they're gonna settle this case before it even goes to trial it says these acts were done in an effort to punish plaintiff Hamby for her public complaint and would have dissuaded a reasonable employee from engaging in similar protected activity. Plaintiff may be unaware of additional deter uh, detrimental acts. We read this right here. <clears throat> the actions and conduct of the defendant constitute illegal retaliation. Why are these balloons going up? What did I say? Congratulations or something? Why do balloons go up? Gotta change some settings on this software. Defendants failure to properly investigate defendant's failure to properly investigate is like a uh, plaintiff's complaint of unlawful workplace discrimination and retaliation uh, for plaintiffs also making such complaint public resulted in plaintiff sustaining damages including financial loss and loss of reputational prestige and brand value typically associated with being part of two-time WNBA championship franchise these are things we read um yeah yeah these are things we read let's just scan through to make sure we're not missing anything new we know that she you know went from vegas to la which is much higher taxes and you know WNBA salaries aren't nba salaries for vegas sports market we're not available for more saturated endorphin market due to its illegal actions defendant must pay damages and an amount to be determined Five or back pay, front pay, lost benefits. Uh, 
uh, defendant engaged in such actions as malice and reckless. Yes, we read these things. It's all part of the uh, complaints, part of different, uh, different complaints, plaintiff has had to obtain the services of the attorney to protect her rights. Uh, it says, wherefore, okay, we're at the end here. Yep. It says, wherefore, plaintiff pray, uh, praise this court for praise this court for a jury trial on all appropriate claims and to enter judgment in favor of plaintiff by awarding plaintiff an amount sufficient to fully compensate her including tax consequences for all economic losses of any kind and otherwise make her whole in accordance with the law an award of compensatory and punitive damages to be determined at trial, an award of attorney's fees and costs, and any other relief the court deems just and proper. So we just went through the entire complaint made by uh, made by the uh, plaintiff there. Derek and Happy. Derek and, Derek and Happy. So as you can see, this is what's going on. The um, they, this was filed August 12th, and at the time of recording, um, I don't think the ACES nor the WNBA has issued a statement yet. I checked the WNBA. Uh, let's see about the Las Vegas ACES. I, I would doubt it. I would think they would. I would think that they would release a joint statement or two separate statements, but at the same time. Vegas Aces. Nothing on Twitter. Yeah, I don't think, you know, they just want to go metal, so they're not going to say anything yet. I will continue to follow this story to see what it is that they say, but she definitely <clears throat> has a case. She definitely has a case. And she's looking to recoup some of these losses that she has had to, um, that she's had. Because, again, man, California is not a desirable place. And, and it seems like it was kind of inferred there like hey man you just moved me out here to california where you know taxes are gonna kick my behind here it seems like it was a whole plot against her i don't know all everything that was going on behind the scenes but you know, she filed this lawsuit and we're gonna continue to follow we're gonna follow it and see where it goes i would think that this is something that WNBA want to go away as quickly as possible something that they just probably can't you know afford to afford to have especially um, you know you have the playoffs coming up things like that of course unless they settle the trial is not gonna go away like that just be over and done with or anything like that but this was definitely a shocker when I saw this I was interested in talking about it it's the first time I read the complaint because it yeah yeah, so Derek is, you know, she's suing him. And again, um, I think she has a case and we're going to continue to follow it. I don't expect any players or anything or anyone to say anything about it, but we will see. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to hear me out. Let me know what you guys think. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and we'll talk soon.